more earth and space sciences today. We'll be talking about the rock cycle and natural resources. So pretty cool topics. Thanks for coming. Always remember to pause, rewind, watch as many times as needed. And remember, science rocks. All right, get out that science notebook. Get ready to take some notes and draw pictures as you follow along. Go ahead and copy down these 27 vocab words. Remember, they go in ABC order like this. And just come back later and create your own definitions of these words. So go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. Okay, the rock cycle. There are three major classifications of rock based on their method of their formation. We've got igneous rock, metamorphic rock, and sedimentary rock. So the rock cycle is the series of processes by which rocks are transformed from one type to another and continually renewed. So the origin of all rock can ultimately trace back to the solidification of molten magma. The rock cycle also includes several different processes as well. So crystallization is the process by which magma cools and forms solid rock. And then you've got heat and pressure, often changing one type of rock into another. And weathering, erosion, and deposition are the processes that break rock down into sediment at the Earth's surface. Wind, rain, running water, and ice commonly take part in these processes. So com compaction and cementation, also known as lithification, is the process of loose segments being formed into sedimentary rocks. And melting, of course, is the process that transforms solid rock back into liquid magma. All right, a little more about igneous rock. It forms when magma and lava cool and make mineral crystals. So igneous rock is typically hard and is often glossy and shiny. So there are two basic types of igneous rock which are classified by how they form, intrusive and extrusive. So intrusive igneous rock forms underground. Intrusive igneous rock forms underground. Extrusive igneous rock forms above ground as lava and other materials that erupt from volcanoes cool quickly. Okay, some info about sedimentary rock. So weathering, you've heard of weathering. It's the breakdown of rock by agents such as wind and water. And then erosion is the transporting of the broken rock material or sediments to a new location where it is deposited. That's erosion. So sediments may also contain plant and animal matter. As more sediment is deposited, it stacks up in layers, right? So eventually, the upper layers put pressure on the lower layers. This causes sediments to pack closer together in a process called compaction. So through that process, um, actually through the process of cementation, Minerals from the groundwater form between the sediment grains, connecting the grains together to form rock. So that's cementation. The rocks formed from the deposition, the compaction, and cementation of sediment, the rocks formed from all three of those things, are sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks often occur in distinct layers and sometimes contain fossils. All right, metamorphosis, the word metamorphosis means transformation or change. So the third major classification of rock is appropriately named metamorphic rock. Tectonic forces can push all types of rocks deeper into the earth. So these rocks are then subjected to extreme heat and pressure. So this heat and pressure can result in the deformation and metamorphism of these rocks. So metamorphic rocks are rocks that form from other rocks under extreme heat and pressure. 
All right, let's talk a little bit about natural resources. So a natural resource is a useful material that comes from the earth. Natural resources are not distributed evenly on earth. People use natural resources in daily life. We also use natural resources to make things that make everyday tasks easier and more convenient. So a few examples are petroleum. Petroleum can be used as fuel and to make plastic. Many structures are made from metals that come from ores. Crops can be grown in area, areas with fertile soil. Water is necessary for life processes of all organisms on Earth. So resources that can be used up are known as non-renewable resources. So once non-renewable resources have been used, they are gone forever. So non-renewable resources include things like fossil fuels and metal ores. Petroleum is a non-renewable resource. Petroleum formed when organic matter from dead organisms was buried in sedimentary rock and placed under intense heat and pressure. So over many years, the organic matter decomposed and changed it to become petroleum. So due to its formation from the remains of dead plants and animals, petroleum is sometimes called fossil fuel. So petroleum or crude oil is pumped from the ground using machines like this one. And some, some regions of Earth have more petroleum than others, depending on the geologic history of that area. And this graph shows that the majority of the known petroleum in 1997 was located in the Middle East and northern region of Africa. So petroleum is a very important resource for humans. It can be used for energy as well as making plastics. All right, metal can be used to build many different things, including buildings and vehicles. So metal ore is a type of rock that contains metallic minerals such as gold, silver, and iron. So the metal inside of the metal ore can be extracted by processing the ore. Soil is the top layer that covers the earth and is made of weathered rock and decaying plants and animals that have been broken down into very small pieces. So different regions of the world have different soil types. The region's soil type is very important because it determines the kind of plants that can be grown there. So some plants require very fertile soil, you know, while others can grow in less fertile soil. So this map shows different soil types in different regions of the world. Water is necessary for life processes of all organisms on Earth. The distribution of fresh water on Earth has historically played a significant role in determining where humans build cities and what kinds of agriculture they can practice to sustain the population of that city. So as technology has developed, humans have learned how to extract groundwater from under the surface of the earth. So since about 30% of earth's fresh water is found underground in the groundwater, okay, compared to less than 1% that is found as surface water, this has been important for the continued development of our society. So different locations in the US have different amounts of available groundwater. All right, guys, make sure to watch these two videos sometime. Uh, weathering and erosion from Crash Course Kids, that's pretty cool. And a Bill Nye video over the rock cycle. Let's do some practice questions. Number one, the diagram shows the basic materials and processes involved in the rock cycle. Which process is involved in breaking down solid rock and turning it into sediment? 
So look this over, pause it, look at your answer choices, and see what you think. All right, so solid rock is broken down into sediment by the process of weathering. Weathering. So the process of erosion then carries small bits of rock with wind or water. So once this material is deposited, it can then be transformed into sedimentary rock by the process of compaction and cementation. So the answer we're looking for is C, weathering. You can notice that sedimentary rock leads to erosion and weathering, which leads to sediment. Number two, igneous rocks form when minerals crystallize from cooling magma or lava. The more slowly the magma or lava cools, the larger the crystals are able to grow. The images show two different igneous rocks. So examine the images and then answer the question that follows. So assuming that these images, X and Y, um, are shown at the same scale, which of the following can be concluded based on the information we just read? So pause it, look it over, and see what you think. Okay, so because rock-wise, mineral crystals are larger, see how they look larger than X crystals, they're bigger, um, rock Y cooled more slowly than rock X, because when we talked about it, it said the more slowly magma or lava cools, the larger the crystals will grow. So since these are larger, it probably cooled very slowly. So that matches up with A. Number three, the diagram illustrates the basic processes that have resulted in the Rocky Mountains. So based on this diagram, which statement is most likely true? So look it over and see what you think. Okay, so subsurface processes can result in the building of mountain ranges like the Rocky Mountains. Surface and subsurface processes are involved in the rock cycle. So, some of these subsurface processes, such as the sliding of one tectonic plate beneath another, can result in changes to the Earth's surface. So, we're going to go with D. Number four, the diagram shows different soil regions around the world. So, the map shows that different regions of the world have different soil types. So which of the following is most likely true? So pause it, look it over, see what you think. Okay, so different regions of the world have different soil types. The soil type of a region depends on the type of geologic processes that occur there and the rate at which they occur. So geologic processes that can result in differing soil types include weathering, erosion, deposition, and volcanic activity. So like areas with high amounts of deposition, such as deltas, often have a very fertile soil. So let's look at our choices, and that goes with D. Last one, number five. Different regions have different levels of access to energy resources. So Kentucky, for example, is rich in coal deposits. And Texas produces more natural gas than any other state. And Oregon has many accessible rivers. Okay. Regions that are lacking in large amounts of energy resources tend to import resources from other regions. So quite often, the most cost-effective choice in such regions is nuclear energy. So the chart here shows the percentage of electric energy derived from different technologies in four different states. So which of the following is the best explanation for the vast difference in energy resources used by different states? So pause it and see what you come up with. Okay, so states usually choose energy sources based on their access to natural resources. So Kentucky and the surrounding states contain large amounts of coal. 
which creates an incentive to use this resource. And Texas produces more natural gas than any other state. And Oregon has many rivers due to its high amount of rainfall. And this makes producing a large amount of hydroelectric power possible. Hydro water, right? So many states that are poor in energy resources, such as New Hampshire, must import them from other regions. Okay, so we're going to look at our choices and go with A. States usually choose energy sources based on their access to natural resources. All right, after you have fully mastered the topic of the rock cycle and Earth's resources under Earth and Space Sciences, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment, maybe a model to explain all of this to your teacher.